Hello viewers, and welcome back to our Let's Play of War in the West. I'm your host, Pupu Chu, and well, today we're starting off, uh, I believe, episode 4 or 3 now. And anyhow, um, I've uh, we're actually doing some backtracking at the very start of the game, because as it turns out, the, uh, the air missions plotted by the AI is actually really, really good for turn number 1. Um, I tried it out in the test game, and with that said, I figured we'd look into it uh, just, to, just to get some more details into how the, how the air uh, force works and pretty much uh, what it what it tries to do. So uh, with that said, I mean this will most likely take you know one or two minutes to get through the uh, the first bit of the game. But as you can see, the, the missions that they have set up are pretty similar to ours. They've got uh, a few tactical air force superiority missions covering uh, your, your troops or friendly troops to stop enemy raids. Um, a few ground attack missions on where enemies are concentrated. A nice uh, large recon mission covering yeah pretty much all of the island except for uh the last tile right here with nine nine defenses so that's that and a general ground attack mission here um so why do i bring this up well and they also have a, a ground support mission uh well i bring this up because uh the mission planning here is actually really good, really, really good. And with that said, I wanted to check out uh, what the AI has done for the missions that uh, they assigned. So um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe all of the, or actually the vast majority of these uh, missions actually use pre-plotted groups. Um, and they seem to be, yeah, they seem to be fairly, fairly small uh, bundles of troops for this. So they're definitely not using um, a ton. The only things that are uh, set up to be auto auto uh, enabled are these, say, ground attack missions for one. Uh, the main thing, though, is, just want to check this one, is that uh, if we look at the, the target priorities, for example, Strategic Air Force is going after all of the enemy airfields on Sicily just in general, and it's doing a minor port attack, um, which, which effectively just says if there's uh, still any planes ready, try to use them for that purpose. Uh, the rest are just more or less your generic missions. Uh, the one over here for the attack on uh, this gr cluster of enemies is actually set up on a whole bunch of different settings. Uh, incidentally, it targets airfields even though there's none there, some units, some minor unit damage, a lot of ferries apparently, and uh, it has a focus on interdiction and all that, so it's it's typically what we expect to see. Uh, the main thing, though, is taking a look at the recon type of thing. Uh, the recon is focusing on airfields and units, which is quite interesting. Um, that might mean, or actually, yeah, this is one of the parts of the game that I'm not too terribly familiar with. It looks like they're they're trying to get uh, information on units, which helps out inside the ground attack mission because um, they, uh, when we bomb these unit tiles, uh, we 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 do cause interdiction, but we're we're in a sense attacking units at the same time to cause that interdiction. So it looks like that is uh, actually a very uh, a very useful thing. We'll put, a, we'll, we'll put a one uh, blip tile on uh, interdiction to put that on low, and I just want to uh, get the turn started and then over with. So we'll just enact that and see how it goes. So yeah, uh, I found great results with uh, just yeah the the preset conditions here more or less because um, for one our planes really keep the the, the German Luftwaffe away and the ground attack missions that it's set up are uh, they're they're definitely not bad as you can see it's day number three and we've already inflicted uh, more than our fair share of enemy air losses and as you can see their bombing run our bombing runs continue and we've what we've knacked up uh yeah almost 60 planes on the ground right so they will just continue to do its thing we'll try to bomb practically everywhere and look would you look at that that jumps to 2000 like yeah 250 ish and that's increasing even more this is actually the the best roll I've gotten so far, so that absolutely pounds the Luftwaffe, and despite it saying that uh, they've only lost 48 planes and 77 damaged, we took, uh, mind you, quite a few hits as well, um, it is actually quite substantial, and again, I believe this is the fact that uh, the game first calculates these planes as being damaged, and then it realizes that uh, they're never going to be repaired, where they, don't, they, they, they simply don't have the means to. Um, so it includes it as a loss. So anyhow, that racks up a lot of kills. Um, so yeah, now it says 280 over here inside the permanent losses tab. 
And out of those, it looks like we nabbed a lot of BF-109s once again, and a few of those Fokker Wolves. Um, the rest of the planes, I mean, we picked off a few Stukas, I'm not really familiar with the Italian planes, though I'd imagine they're not that great. And in the process, we lost a mixture of things, which is, once again, um, not great, but I mean, it's definitely not bad in the sense that we know for, uh, for a fact that not one particular uh, unit was severely hampered. So. Um, let's take a look at the map. Yeah, we conducted a lot of reconnaissance missions. Our guys bombed a few different areas. Um, what else has happened? And a lot of ground combat where a lot of enemy air uh, sorties were intercepted around the U.S. troops and some off the coast of uh, the British troops. So uh, this is to be expected. So we got some intel, checking up on interdiction levels. And hey, would you look at that? Uh, since we had recon reconnaissance on the units, um, but not terrain, we managed to rack up seven, seven, uh, seven points for seventy points rather of interdiction, and that is an absolute ton, uh, just right here. So that's uh, yeah, that's one thing. Checking up on the seas, uh, which one of these are sea interdiction? Yeah, the, the, the Luftwaffe is trying to pick off shipping, and with that said, that's sort of the reason why there were so many air missions going on over there. But anyhow, um, going back, what I'm just going to do right here is uh, I'm just going to move some of these infantry units out of these ports, do a quick uh, round of of maintenance, if you will, on these amphibious landing troops because they are, uh, yeah, they are quite essential. If these things get damaged severely, these will actually hamper your invasion plans, aka things like D-Day, uh, Anzio, uh, things like that, or just just in general, amphib amphibious uh, or waterborne movements by quite a lot. So we'll put them back in safe ports in North Africa, just like that. Right, so going back to the land phase, we've, uh, yeah, there's high interdiction here, so a lot of the units there are probably very, very fatigued. Um, gonna use Omar Bradley's, is, uh, let's see, what is this, 45th Infantry Division to clear out a couple of guys right around the coast here, um, simply because we want to take these airfields and hopefully get the ports repaired in a, in a fast enough time where we can start basing planes on, uh, on Italy or Sicily without uh, killing our ground forces is uh, logistics. So there we go, want to push over there, grab the airfield real fast. And one of the things about grabbing these airfields is that in theory, uh, ready planes have a chance to say, for example, when you take over an airfield, the planes which are ready uh, for flight have the chance to escape, whereas the damaged ones instantaneously get destroyed um, when that movement is done. So that's uh, that's actually one of the big reasons why I want to damage those planes and uh, get to them as fast as possible. So uh, we'll get our guys to advance around uh, the railroad because that's uh, that's an easier method of, method of advance than the alternative. Get the uh, U.S. infantry here, and some of the, uh, I believe, French um, were the the colonial colonial French infantry here. They're actually mountaineers to press through here, and oh, checking up on interdiction levels here. This one actually has none, so we're not going to attack the the German mechanized infantry. We'll push back the Italians, hit them again, and they shattered, so they disappeared. Uh, the reason what I the reason why I want to do this is I want to combine the U.S. Uh, second armored uh, unit into a whole stack, move it up through here, and because this tile has seven units of interdiction or seventy units of interdiction, um, this is going to be quite a quite a quite a hefty blow. So we'll hit them once, see uh, see our vehicle losses, and ooh, would you look at that? We took fifty, and they took twenty seven vehicle losses, but nevertheless. Uh, what happens here is that, firstly, that seven units of interdiction, um, where how, how it works specifically, I believe, is that during the bombings, uh, a percent of their units are disrupted. Afterwards, a uh, when you start the battle, an additional like interward disruption roll is uh, is done, and that's added to the to the enemy units' fatigue. And then following that, if you have ground support planes flying around, that'll actively add disruption to the enemies. And then afterwards, if they retreat. Uh, depending on which tile they retreat into, or just in general move into, they also take a bit of attrition um, and even more interdiction, just like that. So that should be the. We're actually can we do one more action? That should. Or yeah, we could attack this unit. 
So we'll attack him here as well. That's going to take out 25 of their vehicles and 29 of ours, and that will be the end of this turn. So, um, checking out the ground combat, let's take a look at how much the Germans lost right here. So if we do show details, it'll tell us all that. If we do, uh, if we take a look at, uh, I believe, ground losses, take a look at disruption, you'll see that our air support uh, came in came in handy in the sense that it disrupted yeah almost half of their support units and it disrupted apparently 45 out uh, out of the 35 tanks that they had and uh, that's that's actually really good that is that is superb so um, taking a look at their ground losses they took a lot of uh, destroyed Panzer H's and this is very very good because that means we're damaged and destroyed which means that the vast majority of their tanks are gone. Um, on the other hand, on our side, we took a look. At, we took some losses with uh, some of these gun carriers. But if you look, if you notice, we didn't actually lose all too many uh, Shermans and all that. So, uh, with that said, the 51 vehicles that we traded were 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 less severe, to say the least, than the alternative. And that is pretty much just going to be end uh, of turn number one, right? So, as you can tell, uh, the the air portion of the game is very very critical. Hmm. So now the Germans, uh, where the AI does its thing, and we'll be, uh, yeah, we'll be back as soon as they do theirs. Uh, there we go, so they're going to run their own air missions. And again, one of the things about the air missions right now is that for some reason the uh, the training losses haven't been adjusted. So yeah, you uh, depending on how many pilots you have to train, and eventually if uh, this campaign goes well, the Germans will have to train an absurd amount of pilots. Uh, they 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 rack up like twenty to thirty training losses in the operational category. And needless to say, I mean that's that's kind of a lot uh, if you consider the weeks or the turns being weekly turns. So anyhow, getting back to our uh, our campaign nice and properly. Yeah, uh, twelve minutes in. Let's see. Um, so they took a few more losses. They took a lot of fighter bomber losses, level bomber losses, a few recon planes. Uh, so not that bad. We'll put this back into our core. Take a look at our missions here, and uh, we'll keep the uh, we'll keep the missions more or less the same, um, at least generally. So. Here's what we'll do. We'll try to we'll uh, yeah we'll adjust the missions this time, right? So I see that Malta air cover where Malta's uh, air coverage mission is slightly off. So we'll move that forward to cover our guys uh, a bit better. Um, let's get the reconnaissance mission to refocus. So we'll grab recon tactical air force, and with this recon mission, we are going to take a look at some of the aircraft they have, um, and I think we'll. We'll switch out some of these for some uh, some some more ready troops. So put those guys in there, and we'll get them set up. They're gonna have a smaller. Uh, we're actually we're gonna move the reconnaissance over to the uh, to the to the mainland to an extent. And checking up on this, they have. Well, we'll put it on something like that. We'll get them to buzz around inside this area, taking a look at units, minor priority on airfields, um, a very low priority on ports, ferries, and uh, an interdiction because they have a lot of air guns where they have airfields and uh, ports, and we'll get them to buzz around right here for the meantime. Right, so they're still uh, supporting ground units. I'm going to check this, open this up, see uh, which units are doing what. And uh, bu -bu -bu, let's see, I should be able to add uh, 64 units of these um, P-40 Warhawks. So we'll get them assembled there and we'll hit done. So that should add uh, some more power to that, which is quite nice. And we'll reschedule this bombing mission to target this area right around here. So now target priority, once again, units, ports and other things just like that. <laughs> And uh, that'll be that. And with strategic air force, I'm going to have them fly. Uh, have yeah, I'm going to have them fly two types of missions here. I'm going to have them fly three days of uh, high-level bombardment. And now we're going to put this over here, near uh, Messina and the, uh, the the ferry crossing. Scale back the area to four. There we go. 
and we're going to give them a, uh, a general order to target uh, airfields on normal, ports on normal, ferries on normal, and units and interdiction on low. So I want them to do, uh, or I want strategic uh, air force actually, you know what, we'll increase this to a, to a mission structure like that. I want them to hit this area, I want them to first and foremost pick off the ports here and uh, hopefully trap some or slow down the German retreat out of Sicily as best as they can. So then hopefully our land forces can catch more of them as they, uh, as you may have noticed, back out into this area and try to get uh, back onto mainland uh, Sicily just like that. So uh, taking a look at our air forces, that'll be that. Uh, we'll fire off these missions and I think next turn we'll start to move some airplanes uh, to it or to Sicily nice and properly. Right, so on this turn, we're not going to rack up as many air kills, and we're probably going to take a lot of flak losses, just given the fact that we really have to bomb the Messina and area. And uh, yeah, we'll just run those missions. And let's see, so it comes back, ground attack, strategic air force, it looks like they've hit the, uh, yeah, they were hitting the ferries, they hit a... Uh, they hit an airfield, took out a few fighters uh, in the process, but it looks like they didn't pick off anyone on the ground here on day one. Uh, so a lot of interdiction, a lot of interdiction, day two, day four, day six. Uh, they didn't hit the ports at all, so I guess they didn't prioritize those targets. Right, um, taking a look at some of the other guys. What have they done? Tactical Air Force launches an attack. They were interdicting, and they were. They also hit railways, so they got some railway use uh, bumped up. That's also nice. Um, ground support, recon. They ran a whole bunch of interdiction recon missions. So, taking a look at the map, let's check out what levels of interdiction they have. Ah, right. So we don't have a lot of information on these units, and with that said, we weren't able to uh, bomb them and jack up uh, the interdictions there all too much though uh, behind their units we were able to to uh, really interdict movement there because there was there's yeah there's less anti-air guns and I'm guessing this unit right here with the four is uh, some sort of is a Italian unit which doesn't possess uh, a lot of anti-air so we were able to hit that and in addition we were able to do some bombing back here interdict uh, hopefully supplies coming uh, through this area but uh, one thing that I know for sure is that uh, the, the port over here of Messina actually carries a, a large amount of supplies. So that doesn't do as much as, uh, as well as we would hope it would. Right. So uh, we're going to go the historical route. The uh, Let's get the U.S. 2nd Armored Division to make a bit of a run. This is going to be semi-historical. We're going to get um, the 7th U.S. Army to push and we want to capture these ports as fast as we can because we want them to uh, start to, to be repaired as fast as uh, as we can try to uh, just press through here hopefully break through to the through the Italian defenders but no no luck All right, so we'll move the command up we'll get uh, the parachute division oddly enough um, the parachute, uh, or rather the airborne division, has a whole yeah has a whole thing right here, but only one of them were uh, were deployed um, over here. And I'll get the U.S. infantry to try to make a push through the uh, through the mountains here. As best as they can. Right, so that finishes it. Uh, yeah, that finishes it up for the U.S. troops. Let's get uh, the Canadian Corps to clear out the two city tiles. I want the tanks to assemble. And the idea here is that if the uh, if if the enemy has a really weak uh, flank here, right next to the to the to the med to the volcano. Um, I don't really know what the name of that uh, that place is. Uh, we might be able to break through here with a with a nice deliberate attack. So our guys are going to be supported by air. We're going to try to hit this area, and it looks like it's uh, it's a combination of Panzers and other troops. So yeah, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's actually quite a lot. We're going to try again, nevertheless, and hopefully, if we were if we were able to make a blow right there, we would have been able to. Uh, and tra uh, trap quite a few units, but the nev nevertheless, I mean, it's heavy uh, mountainous terrain, so 
it is uh, quite difficult. And one of the things that we're going to do is that we're going to trade some administration points for faster port repair in uh, wherever we can find it, really. So we'll get those things started, and that'll be the end of this turn. And right, so now we should be back at uh, where we were last time. Well, actually, I think we only got to, um, to the start of turn two. So anyhow, um, that'll be it for this episode right here.